healthcare assistant is to help the nurses and the doctors to give the best care to the patients whilst they're in hospital. Each department um, is very different and so today I will be working on a um, Covid uh, de-escalated ward which has been opened to help the flow of patients that uh, have had Covid um, and are no longer symptomatic to flow through the hospital and the idea is that it um, helps with uh, freeing beds and that relieves pressure on departments like A&E um, and other acute medical wards. So on the COVID wards we have been wearing uh, hospital scrubs to you know, try and limit the uh, spread of the infection outside of the hospitals. So the, the main duties in, in this ward as a HCA will be to make sure that you reposition patients, that you are doing required uh, observations. This, these could be the standard observations, so taking people's oxygen saturations, um, their respiratory rates and their heart rates and blood pressure. Uh, this is so that the doctors and the nurses get an, uh, an early warning score. This is very useful for them because it, it indicates when maybe something's going awry with the patient and this can prompt them to do the various bloods. It's all, it's all quite modern now and high tech in hospitals, you know, we input almost everything onto iPads um, which puts it into the hospital system. The doctors and nurses can pick up the information that they need um, from wherever they are. Another thing that I do really love about the job is the variation in individuals that work in the hospitals. So you know we work with uh, nurses, doctors, occupational therapists, uh, physiotherapists and that's just to name a few. You know there's more dietitians, um, speech and language therapists and they're all unique characters um, and you get people from all over the world so you know, we have people from the Philippines um, to India, and then uh, you have people that are born in the uh, UK, some people that are from Africa and migrated to the UK, and it's a, it's a very nice cultural blend um, that I've never had before, and so that's a useful experience for, for me. So I will see if I can get a couple of um, my, my colleagues that are working today, because um, there's a few characters. Um, and maybe they'll tell you a little bit about uh, how they find the role. Um, you know, there's not too many people that I've found that don't enjoy the job, and a lot of people tend to go on to other things um, afterwards. For example, there's a lot making the transition from healthcare assistant um, to nursing. In fact, the manager of the ward I'm working on at the moment started off working in the kitchen. Um, she then moved to work as a healthcare assistant, loved it so much that she became a nurse and now she's the manager of the ward, so a very experienced nurse. So it just shows that there is that progression and those, that kind of route in the hospital. Um, not only that, 
you know, there's a few people that I've met that are doing the sim same similar thing as as myself, and that they're using uh, the HCA position to gain experience in the hospital um, that will ultimately make them a better doctor for when they finish their medical degrees. And for me, that's a big part of why I, I do love working in the hospital because things like venipuncture, um, I just wouldn't have been trained and um, had the experience if I wasn't given this opportunity in this role. I'm gonna try and film as much as I can without breaching confidentiality of patients um, and the hospital policies for social media use. Um, oh, look at this. <laughs> It's the small things, but today's going to be a good day, so I know that already. The first thing that we do is we have a handover with the night staff, so it's just super important making sure that we understand the patient's needs, um, what's going on that day, whether patients are being discharged, and whether it's going to be expecting patients to come in. Um, also, uh, we check things like are they uh, type 2 diabetic so we know that we need to do the blood sugar or are they on steroids that kind of thing it also lets us know um, how to mobilize patients um, as that's actually uh, a big part of what we do as well helping people get out uh, out of bed whether they be using a hoist if they're uh, bed bound and aren't too uh, able to mobilize uh, or whether it's just the assistance of one with a um, with a zimmer frame Are you blushing? No, no mate. <laughs> no, just what about. Just tell us about your day. Day? Uh, it's the same. Different day. Same money. <laughs> same money, yeah. Uh, the person that you're looking after today. Oh, one, one he's, to one. He's tell, great. Me, tell me about him. Oh, he's my, he's my best friend today. He's my best friend. He's, <laughs> he's very, very generous to me. Have you been helping him drive his Lamborghini today? Oh, not today. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a Lamborghini. It's only a Mazda. It's only a Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> a two-seater Mazda. <laughs> That's what I had. Oh, yeah. No, it's a Skoda Fabia. It's That's a what he told me. <laughs> it's a Skoda Fabia, actually. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're quite good with you know, especially one-to-one -one patients, I think. Oh, well, um, I love him. Um, <laughs> he, got, he got a bit of a character. He can be, um, you know, can be difficult at times, but, mm. well, you know how to deal with patients, isn't it? Yeah, you know? I think it is. You need, to, you need to learn what they want. Be one of them, I say. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's about learning, like, to not tell them no, but to kind of guide them well, you need to understand the patient really, uh, what they really wanted. Um, because you just say stopping, no, stopping them what they wanted to do, it means you're depriving their liberty of what they wanted to do. So, yeah, yeah just yeah. literally gaining their trust in between. So, that's the big step. Oh, we always have fun, isn't it, Danny Boy? <laughs> always have fun every single day. We've been doing this for every years. Every day in paradise, my friend. Oh, always in paradise, <laughs> my friend. Always in paradise.
It's been it's been the pleasure working with you, Danny. So. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna miss you, my friend. Uh, well, I'm not going anywhere yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who knows? All tell. All tell. Yeah, Time will tell. Right. Time will yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. You'll find out soon. Oh, well. Wish you all the best. With hopefully, that. hopefully. Thanks, man. That's alright. All right. All right. So today we have um, three nurses and four HCAs on shift uh, for about 28 patients. Um, so that's about four or five bays and a couple of side rooms. Side rooms are important because when patients have things like uh, C. difficile, so infections, you can isolate them in those rooms for the required amount of time uh, and stop spreading the, uh, the uh, infection uh, to other patients. Um, so these are in uh, high demand um, and we can also use these for end of life patients as well. When it comes to the one-to-one -one patients, we tend to do this in two hour stints per healthcare worker, and then we swap so that we're not getting too tired, um, and that way we're making sure we are keeping our focus on them. And we also wear an armband just to let you know uh, staff members that are walking past know that we're not just sitting on our asses. Another thing that um, sometimes goes under the radar is we actually answer the phone to um, a lot of relatives. Relatives often want to have checkups on how their family member's doing or arranging a Zoom call, which is, you know, how a lot of people are living in 2020 and 2021. As any nurse can tell you, you actually spend a lot of time um, writing uh, in people's notes and folders um, to prove that you've done uh, certain actions. So for example, once we've washed a patient in the morning, uh, we'll write that in their uh, bedside folders. Um, and when we turn patients, so those that have to be repositioned every two to four hours, and we also write that down in their bedside notes as well. It's just proof, uh, you know, um, that if anything did happen, you can uh, show in court that, you know, this patient was moved to this position at this time. Just to word on like the break rooms and stuff, most break rooms are pretty standard. Um, some departments have shared ones and they often are the slightly nicer uh, break rooms. I remember in um, A&E they had a really, really nice uh, break room, but it's obviously shared by a lot more members of staff, so I guess they can get away with um, having those facilities. <laughs>
so I've just got changed. I'm just heading back to my car now. Um, a really good day. Um, when again, I, I tend to just go through some some events that happened in the day. Um, I think it's really good to reflect, uh, especially for me, um, because every day you learn something about a new condition. You meet another brilliant individual that maybe you can learn some some things from, um, whether that be a healthcare professional or a patient. Um, and it's those small things that kind of uh, get you up in the morning, um, which make you not mind waking up early anyway. So um, yeah, I'm gonna head off home. Thank you guys uh, for watching. This will just be a little outro, so um, stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing some more stuff. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button.